Hello, calculator friends. Okay, so this is video number uh, 11. We were going to take this thing apart, and uh, last time I was having difficulty removing this, um, I thought that maybe some penetrating um, lubricant would help, but clearly it's not coming off. So instead I'm going to work from the opposite direction. Um, there appears to be this um, thing uh, that I can remove. So I'm going to try to do that and see what happens. Okay, so this actually does loosen up. So now the question is, can I remove this part? Um, <coughs> that's going to be a little difficult. How exactly do I remove that? How am I supposed to remove this? Um, well, what I could do is, no. So there we go. All right, so um, this thing just slides right off. Okay. Should slide right off. It's getting stuck on the end. getting stuck on the end. Maybe I should just bang it off somehow. No? sure why this is not coming off. It doesn't seem to be stuck on anything in particular. It's possible that it's just being ornery. Okay, so what I'm going to do with a part that's stuck like this is I just tend to think that it's stuck simply because it's tight. Um, and rather than put some lubricating um, penetrating lubricant on this, um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try something else, which is I have a heat gun right over here. Um, it's basically just like a hair dryer, except it's made specifically for electronics, but we can use it. Um, and I'm just going to heat up this part um, to see if then I can remove it. So I'll turn it on high. heat's coming out very nicely. So I'm just going to heat this up. And what the heat should do is expand the metal. Metal expands ever so, so slightly under heat. So by heating all the parts, Whatever gap is between the uh, outer part and the axle should increase ever so slightly. And that's the increase that we want. We don't really care about expanding the outer piece or expanding the inner piece. It's actually the gap between the two that we really care about. So I think that's probably hot enough. So now, and there we go, very easily. So the parts are still quite hot. Um, so I'm just going to leave this here like this. Um, so this is the orientation with this uh, screw facing that way. 
Okay, so what else have we got? We've got a gear that comes off, and the gear sits on Um, okay, so this is this is interesting. We have an axle with a slot in it, um, and this part right here, which I have to try to pry. There we go. There's a space that I can pry it off with. So the part that fits on here, this is sort of the um, the bearing that the gear sits on. Um, there we go. Okay. And now it should come right out. So this is a bearing and it has a little tab in it and that tab fits into the slot. Um, and then the gear fits right over this and it's sized just so that the gear can rotate on this without actually moving up and down very much. So that's actually very precise. Um, I'm going to attempt to measure the outer diameter here, which is looking like um, 0.687. And then if I look at the diameter of the gear, it's hard to tell. I mean, it says 0.684, which is, of course, ridiculous. Um, so if I try to apply no force at all to the calipers, I get 0.6865, or point, yeah, 0.6865. Now, if I try to put that in the gear, I'm getting 0.684, which is clearly impossible. So not such a great um, instrument. Um, nevertheless, they fit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stash these in the bag. With this. Uh, yeah, this is still a little bit hot, so I'm going to set it aside. Um, okay, so the next part is another part that looks kind of like that thing. Um, and it, too, is a bit stuck. And I can just about push it out. Pry at it a bit. Yeah. So this is going to be really difficult to take off. Um, I don't know why it's being so difficult, but what I could do is just sort of jam something in there and maybe bang on it to get it out with something. Okay, so, um, and again, this has an orientation, so the thick part is on the end, and a couple of smaller rings on this side. Um, so the question is, is this going to be another pain? Uh, and indeed, it is going to be somewhat of another pain. Um, So, unfortunately, I can't sit this on something and then bang on it unless I do, I don't know, something like this. Yeah, that actually seems to work. There we go. Okay. So, uh, so this is this other funny looking part. So it goes like that goes into the bag and we get another gear. So basically this is going to be a set of those. A gear, uh, a bearing, a spacer thing, a gear, a bearing, spacer thing, and so on, all the way down to the end where we will get to probably a gear, a bearing, and then maybe another gear, uh, maybe a, a tiny spacer, another gear, another bearing, and then this final end part. 
So let's just go ahead and remove all these parts. Um, and hopefully through the magic again of video editing, uh, this won't take very long. So um, this last piece is actually proving to be a little stubborn. I think because um, now the amount of friction in the top part is about equal to the amount of friction in the bottom part. So this end piece is actually beginning to come out. So if I just keep prying at it, um, hopefully it'll just come right out. And it is just coming right out. It's just requiring a little bit of force. So, and there we go. So, we have this piece here. Um, we have this uh, gear, which is actually different from the other gears. Um, this gear is somewhat rounded, um, and that sat right over here on this, uh, this other bearing surface. Um, that bearing surface, in fact, if we look at these two gears, we can also see, uh, okay, so the, insides, the inside uh, radius, the inside diameter is actually, um, aha, uh -huh, okay, so the inside radius is actually um, the same. Uh, okay, so, um, now on the end, we can see that there's a kind of a spacer here, um, a spacer here, and then, well, okay, sorry, this is the bearing, and then a spacer, and then there's this gear on its bearing. So let's see what we can do to take this whole thing apart. Should just be able to pry it off. Okay. Yep, here it comes. Okay, so again, the order, remembering the order is important, um, as was remembering the orientation of this. In other words, it went on like this and not like this. So that's kind of important. So let's go ahead and remove the bearing surface. is requiring a little more effort. And all I'm doing is I'm prying and rotating. There we go. Okay, so um, they're kind of stuck together, but there it is. Um, there's oil on it. Um, so there's the um, bearing. There is a spacer. The spacer outer diameter is 0.816, so of course it's bigger than the bearing. Um, the thickness of it is 0 0.075, so that's gonna go in there. Um, now because this bearing surface came off of the other side, um, I'm just gonna compare it with an existing, with all the other bearing surfaces, uh, just to make sure that they are identical, and yes, they are completely identical. Okay, gear. Okay, and then we have that gear's bearing surface, which is on here. So I'm just going to dig in with my pick to get a little space in there so that I can reach in there with my fingernails and pull it off. Okay, and then we have this thing, which I will just bang right off. So, this is these are definitely not the right tools. You should never really um, do this with your tools. Um, but I'm not sure what the alternative is. 
I guess I could, you know, make some sort of a fixture that just sits on here and then bang it with a, a hammer. Um, but this is just as expedient. So, here we go. Okay. Yeah, this is proving a little bit recalcitrant. Um, I'm just going to leave this on here for now. Um, but anyway, there is the shaft. Um, you can see that there is a slot that runs the entire, um, the entire length of the shaft. There is a hole in the end here, and there's a hole in the end here for the uh, pin. So, okay. So that was the intermediate wheel assembly. Um, all the parts are in bag 12. There's the axle that gets set aside. So. Uh, we have two other assemblies, two other assemblies that we can look at. Um, the first assembly is the carry assembly, and the second one is the Leibniz wheel. Um, the Leibniz wheel um, is kind of interesting. I'd like to take this one apart now. Uh, we have some pins in here that we are going to have to remove. Um, yeah. Both sides have a pin. So I'm going to look at the pin that looks easiest to remove. It's gonna be this one uh, because the small end, remember that the large end is somewhat rounded. Um, the small end is recessed, which means that it's gonna be easy to get a tool in there and uh, remove it. So I'm gonna take my um, various diameter holding tool thing and I'm going to see which of these, uh huh, okay, so this is going to be a bit of a problem because my holding tool is too thick. So I definitely will have difficulty removing this. I may as well just try this one just for fun. Um, again, we've got a rounded end, and this other end is, uh, it's not, not very round, so I think that's the small end. So let's see, uh, is this too small? That's too small, too small. There we go, that fits right there. Okay, so um, I have all of my banging tools here and the one thing that I am missing is a little hammer. So we will pause for just one moment while I get the hammer. Okay, the hammer. All right. um, I also got this jig. Um, I made this jig to actually fit on the uh, um, carry mechanism so that it can just sit on here. Um, so we'll talk about that later. But for now, um, I've got this thing. Um, I suppose I could use this. That would be kind of convenient. This uh, thing is a little bit too big for that, but that's okay. So I'm just going to raise up the other end. It's a little too much. That looks pretty good. I just want it nice and level. So now um, I have two options here. Um, I can use my bigger punch here, or I can use my smaller one. It looks like the bigger one has uh, a good radius. So I'm just going to give it a few test uh, hits to see if the uh, pin is already loose enough. So here goes. Yeah, I don't know that this pin is actually uh, loose enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat it up right now. Again, the point is to get that gap opened up a little bit. So before, I think I talked about heating it up, putting some uh, penetrating lubricant in there um, to get into the space in between. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to heat up the part to see if it works. Just, just heating it up.
Oh, yeah. Okay, so one thing that I did want to talk about um, before I got into this. Let's go back to the intermediate gear, the intermediate wheel um, assembly. And I want to look at this part compared to this part. Now you can see that this is all shiny and this is kind of dull. Okay. Um, are they made of two different metals? I don't think so. I don't think they are. But I think what's going on is that this is just bare steel and this is actually lacquered with something. Um, so um, I just want to draw your attention to that because then when we later clean these parts we have to be sure not to apply anything that's going to remove the lacquer because the lacquer is the thing that is uh, protecting this against rust. Um, there doesn't really look like there's anything protecting this against rust. Okay, that was just a brief aside. Um, and the thing is that if you look at this, you can see that um, this, uh, this part is shiny, but this is not this one. So there's a clear difference between the coatings of the metal. Um, this one, again, is also not shiny at all. Um, so let's go ahead and put this back on. I'm just going to set that hanging in air so that I'm not also heating up uh, everything else. I'm not sure whether it takes long or not, but we'll, uh, we'll try this right now. Always being careful because this is now quite hot. There we go, it's coming out. So now I'll just take my um, smaller, my smaller punch just to punch it the rest of the way out. And there we go. There's our pin. So that worked pretty well. This pin is probably hot, so there is the taper pin. Quite nice. Nicely done. Okay, now there are plenty of taper pins here. Uh, so it's important to know which taper pin goes in which hole. In addition, it's also important to know which orientation it goes on to the axle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a new bag and I might just store the taper pin with the part and leave it in and leave it by itself in a bag. That's one way of doing it. So the taper pin goes in there. I have a sharpie here. We're up to bag 13. So I'll go bag 13, 77339. Okay, and now is this hot? Yes, it's a bit hot. So I'm going to just pry it off of the axle if I can. I may need a little bit of uh, heating up again. So I can pry it off. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay. So it's still a bit hot. And there we go. So um, so the, also the nice thing about taper pins is that, or taper holes, 
uh, is that they're tapered. So one end is clearly bigger than the other. Um, that holds for the part as well as the hole in the axle. So if we were to take the taper pin again and try to figure out which end it went into, uh, so it's either this way or this way. So clearly it's this way, right? And the same thing with the part. Either it's this way or this way. So, um, so that's kind of nice because it, it sort of tells you the orientation of the part. So that's bag 13. Um, there's also this um, bearing surface. Um, this is asymmetrical. There is this side, which is slightly thicker than this side. So I'm definitely going to measure how big the one side is. So it's coming out to be 0 0.0059 versus the other side is 0 0.033. So that's important to know. That will also go into bag 13. Okay, so we have another part. Um, this is some sort of a cam surface or a locking surface. Um, and it's got another taper pin in it. It fits nicely. So again, we're gonna um, first give it uh, a few experimental taps to see if it'll come out. Uh, maybe it's been heated up enough. Uh, probably not, so I'm just going to go ahead and heat that up. Let it uh, sit in the air. It's probably up to a pretty good temperature. So now I'm going to put it back on my jig and give it a couple more taps. Yeah, it's coming out. It's just being a little bit of a pain. Um, so I just need to uh, give it a couple more bangs. And sorry about the sound. Um, I actually forgot to put my, uh, put my microphone back on my shirt. So it's back on now. So here we go. Okay, this is really proving to be a pain, but I think it is actually coming out. Okay, so the danger, the really big danger with um, banging taper pins with, um, with uh, punches that are too small is that you'll just end up deforming the end of the taper pin. And I think that's probably what's happening right now. 
um, which is kind of unfortunate because it means that the taper pin is just getting tighter. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to leave that as it is for now um, because I do not have a punch that is the correct size. Um, I can go find a punch, um, but unfortunately, um, that's where we're going to have to leave it. Um, okay, so it's been just about 40 minutes. Uh, this has been a rather um, a longer, slightly longer video than the other ones. Um, so that's where we are right now. Um, when we next come back, maybe I'll have a punch that is of the correct size um, to properly punch out this taper pin. So until then, bye. Okay, so uh, this is Rob again. Um, let's take a look at this taper pin. It's been, by now, extremely abused. Um, so this is the problem with taper pins, is that when they're in, they're in, um, and uh, unless you're lucky, I think, there's very little chance of getting them out. Um, in this particular case, banging on it just did not work. Um, heating it up did not work. Um, I even took a small end mill and milled into the pin, um, at which point the mill broke in the hole. Um, so at that point, uh, you may as well just give up. Um, there is absolutely no way of getting this taper pin out. Um, the, only, the only way that this taper pin could possibly be taken out at this point is probably to grind the, uh, the large end flat and then use, uh, I suppose, an end mill to just mill out, uh, to just mill through. You cannot use a drill because a drill has a point on it and that point will wobble around. Um, so you must use a flat end mill in order to mill this out. Um, the mill is probably going to have to be larger than the diameter of the hole um, because if you try to put this into a vise perfectly straight up and down, well, you're never going to get it straight up and down perfectly. Um, the, whole, the whole way that they put this on was they put the part on, they put, they put the part on the axle, um, it didn't have any holes in it, and then they just held the part on the axle using some force, uh, and then they just drilled straight through. So um, there's no way that we're ever going to replicate um, the exact angle that this, was, uh, that this was drilled at. So the only alternative really is to put this into a, uh, a drill press or a mill, get an end mill, and just mill the sucker out. Um, that might not even work because I broke off the previous smaller end mill in the pin so it's embedded in there. So now I'm going to have an end mill that's trying to mill out another end mill. Um, this will probably just end in tears, but I guess we'll find out uh, in the next episode. So that was just an epilogue. Bye.